sign means you are approaching a railroad crossing. All of these signals, from the simplest wooden cross arm to the electric bell and light system, are designed for greatest visibility to give you warning of the crossing ahead. These are all signals you cannot afford to ignore. No matter how well you know them, no matter how often you see them, watch for them. Few people get killed by a train they see ahead of time. It's the one they aren't expecting that hurls them into eternity. Chief, the Union Pacific appreciates the campaign your state patrol is making against grade crossing accidents. Thanks. But the answer to our problem is education. Drive on to heed warning signals at grade crossings and realize that they must stop because the train can't. Chief Carroll, where? Just happened. We'll be there right away. We have a crossing accident. Freight hit a truck. Let's go. A moment of careless driving caused this derailment. as you can see, is unimpaired. But at night, things are different. We have to depend on our headlights for all we can see. An approaching train looking like this in the daytime looks like this at night. While the engineer has a daytime view like this, His vision at night is restricted to the area covered by his headlight. Yes, there's a train in this picture. The slight incline to the crossing shoots your headlights below the cars, into which you could crash without warning. School buses and commercial carriers are obliged by law to stop at railroad crossings. People have been killed at these crossings. Five met death here. At this one, three accidents killed seven people. And at this one, the train derailed, killing the engineer and fireman, and injuring many passengers. When it comes to safety, be selfish. Take care of your own personal safety, and you contribute to the safety of others. Mother, do you know where my beanie is? I'm going to get a chocolate cake. Indeed, we 
Ah, oh, darling, we bought with your uh, caps over there on the chair. Mary, where's my fishing rod? I put it on the back porch last week. Jim King, you listen to me. This is a family picnic and not a fishing trip. Now, you leave that rod home and pay some attention to your family. Okay, Mary. Today I'll be strictly the family man instead of the fisherman. How about it, Dad? Let's fly my kite today, huh? Sure, son. Get your kite and let's get started. It's a swell day. Just tailor made for a picnic. Come on, baby. Can I take my dolly? Well, you certainly may, sweetheart. whose lives are snuffed out every year because of carelessness. Jim King loved his family dearly, but he didn't love them enough to look and listen at the railroad crossing in order that they might live. And the little dog will never know why his master and mistress do not return to Folly. It's impossible to correctly judge the speed of an approaching train from a moving car. If you see a train coming, stop. The moral to this picture is, don't let a double track double cross you. Eliminating the crossing itself by an overpass or underpass is the best way to reduce rail crossing accidents. This has been done on major highways by spending vast sums of money. But it's almost a financial impossibility to do this on all secondary crossings. Today, these minor crossings are protected by signals and signs of various types. If you are speeding toward a crossing at 70 miles per hour, it will take you 328 feet to stop if you're a good driver on a good road. Don't speed. This is Johnny. Let's slide in beside him and observe his driving technique. Think it over. Think it over well, because the next train may have your number on it. When it comes to safety, be selfish. It may be your own. Don't let a double track double cross you. Watch for two trains. No trip is so urgent and no service so important that you can't take time to drive safely and courteously. Remember the King family, and don't let your dog wait for you. <laughs> 